In this video, you're going to learn about 2D arrays. 2D arrays are useful anytime that you want to store data in a table or a grid with rows and columns. The syntax for creating a 2D array is similar to the syntax for creating a 1D or what we think of as a normal array. So you can see here on line 5, this is how we declare a 2D array. It's identical to a 1D array, except we have an extra set of square brackets here to indicate that it's a 2D array. So our data type for what we're going to be storing in our array, two sets of square brackets, and then the name of our array. Then to initialize it, we again have the new, our data type, and then again we're going to have two sets of square brackets instead of one set of square brackets like we're used to with the 1D array. And with the 1D array, we would put the length in the square brackets. Here, we have to indicate both the number of rows and the number of columns. So again, this is like a grid or a chart. So we always put the number of rows. So rows go back and forth this way. That comes first. And then our columns come second. And columns go up and down. If you ever forget, just think of a column on a building. It goes up and down. So you know rows go the other way. So we've got three rows, five columns, and then just like with 1D arrays, if you try to print uh, your 2D array directly, you're just going to end up with the memory address it's stored at. Uh, so to actually see what's in the array, we have to write some loops. I've done that down here. Don't worry about it for now. We'll, we'll learn about traversing 2D arrays later, uh, but just know that this uh, method will print our 2D array. So when I call it, you can see over here that I have uh, this grid. It's got three rows here, five columns, and everything is set to null. So just like with a 1D array, if we declare and initialize an array of objects, then the default is null. The default for numbers would be zero. For booleans, it would be false. So we've got null in every single spot here, all 15 spots. We have another way of initializing a 2D array. So here we have words 2, again declared as a 2D array. And this time we're using the curly bracket syntax. So this lets us actually put values in as we initialize it, rather than setting each spot individually. So we have our outer set of curly brackets here. This outer set uh, indicates that this is an array, and each element in our array is actually another array. So you can think of 2D arrays not just as a grid with rows and columns, it's also an array of arrays. So each row in our 2D array is actually a 1D array of strings. So this is our first row, and the syntax for creating the first row is identical to the syntax that we use for creating a 1D array. And then we just have our comma and our second row. Again, just another 1D array of strings, and then a comma and our third row. So I formatted this nicely so we can see our rows. If you wanted to, you could put this all in one line, get rid of those spaces, and just have one long line of your 2D array initialization, but it can be a little bit nicer to do it formatted so that you can see what's going on. So either of these works, declaration is always the same. You can initialize either just by specifying rows and columns or by using the curly bracket syntax. And again, you can see this when it's printed out over here. This is our words to array, and uh, it's got three rows, two columns. All right, so that's how we declare and initialize our 2D array. If we want to change one of these elements, so we're modifying one of our elements, we need to specify the position, which element we want to modify. So we have to use two sets of curly, or excuse me, of square brackets. So just like with our 1D array, we put our name of our array, and then uh, in square brackets, we'd put the position. 
Now we're going to have two sets of square brackets. The first one is for the row. So we're saying we want to modify an element in row 0. The second one is for the column. So column 4 in this case is our last column. We have five columns, but they start being numbered at 0. So we have columns 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we can see that after we've modified the element in row 0, column 4, when we print that array, now all of our elements are null except this one right here, which has our new value. So it's in row 0, column 4. So this is our syntax for modifying elements in a 2D array.